All right. Welcome, John and Marsha. We have the opportunity to talk to John and Marsha and introduce everybody to John and Marsha. Um, I'm going to let Marsha tell her story. Um, Marsha and I and John know each other from four years ago. We worked together on the treadmill, 24-hour treadmill Guinness World Record. And that's when I got to know these powerhouse, uh, this powerhouse couple that have done so much for the Mito community. And I've been, I've been following their feed on Facebook and all the things that they do on social. They have a lot of energy, uh, social energy and actual <laughs> energy to be able to push the cause of Mito. So I was going to ask Marsha first, how has mitochondrial disease impacted you? Yeah, so I have a secondary mitochondrial dysfunction. So my primary uh, diagnosis is called McArdle's disease. And with McArdle's disease, my body doesn't have the ability to break down and store glycogen. And of course, glycogen is a major um, source of energy uh, for, the, for muscles and of course, thus I have uh, mitochondrial dysfunction because of that. So, so it's you. It's <laughs> you have yeah. a firsthand experience yeah. with that. And how yeah. long did that take for that diagnosis, Marsha? When you, from, yeah, from start to finish, about three years. Um, and during the course of that three years, I saw about five doctors. Um, three here in Saskatchewan, and two in Alberta. At the time, Saskatchewan did not have a metabolic specialist, so I was referred to Alberta. Okay, and so I understand that Mito Canada had a role to play in that in helping you get that diagnosis. Can you tell us what that was? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Mito Canada actually helped uh, expedite my referral and was able to get me to see that metabolic specialist, Dr. Khan, a lot quicker. So I really, really appreciate it. that. Was my first involvement with Mito Canada. And what, sorry, and what has getting a confirmed genetic diagnosis meant for you and how has it changed how you care for yourself? For me, getting an actual uh, diagnosis kind of is like getting the extra piece of the puzzle. Uh, you know, yeah, you feel all these symptoms, you don't know what it is, but getting that confirmation kind of validates the symptoms that I felt my whole life and also kind of gives you, gives me a, a starting block, you know, okay, this is what it is. Now I can manage it and, and be aware of it and, and move forward. So it was very, it was very important for me to get a diagnosis. So after the diagnosis from Dr. Khan, what, uh, what was the, uh, what was the next steps? Like, so you have the, this piece in your hand now, mm -hmm. what are, what are the therapies and what are the next steps? Well, there is no cure for mitochondrial disease and there is no cure for medicinal uh, cure for McArdle's disease. So with with both, uh, movement is key. Exercise is uh, is helpful. Um, for McArdle's disease specifically, it is recommended that, you know, I do a light to moderate um, exercise, but that's, it's, that's where the challenge comes in. It's very hard to balance um, what might just be too much. Um, uh, so yeah, I do have to go for, you asked about the impacts and how this has, but this, I, every three months I have to go and check certain levels of my blood work and that's going to be for, from what I understand for the rest of my life. Okay. So, but at least, at least knowing that you have treatment and having people, uh, that are connected to this mito network that also you can share. So the next piece I kind of wanted to talk to you about is what's, can you describe what the importance of Mito Canada's mission to raise awareness, to support families and to advance research? Yeah, uh, well, those three pillars, support, research and awareness are, are huge. Um, they, they're, it's so important. It can really, when those things are, are done and, and awareness and, you know, and research, it can bring uh, improve quality of life for people affected by mitochondrial disease. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's very, very important. And also just touching on the support aspect of it. It also brings, um, a sense of community, um, to those who are impacted directly by mitochondrial disease or caregivers and support systems for those people. So. And how has being connected to Mito Canada helped you in your Mito journey? 
know. Well, that's, I could go on a lot about that, but um, just um, from everything from local connections, meeting Saskatchewan families and in Rajan here as well, people who are impacted my, by mitochondrial disease. Uh, I became a team lead for <clears throat> Mito Canada, for Team Mito here, and um, that's afforded me the opportunities in the community to do, you know, events, uh, hosting events, fundraising. I had the chance to travel to Toronto last November for the conference, met some amazing people there. Um, I got to hear some uh, really good, um, hear, for, hear, hear from some doctors and some researchers, cutting edge stuff that's good to look forward to. So, yeah. Yeah, so having that conference experience of having all the invested partners um, in mm -hmm. this one place, you have the researchers, you have the pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. you have you have doctors who are helping with the diagnosis, you have research chairs, you have all these people yeah. and advocates for patients. How did that how did that impact your perspective on this mito community? Well, it's very unique uh, to have. Usually, it's just you know the scientists in one uh, conference, the patients and patient advocates in another. So to bring everybody together, it was. Amazing because I got to personally, I got to ask a, a specialist whom I was sitting at the same table with any question that I wanted. So it was it was a chance I, I I never thought I'd get. So it was great. It kind of replicates the the idea of what the mito cell looks like, isn't it? When it's all interlocked and all these pieces and all these partners are yeah. able to get together, and you guys form that energy, and you guys are creating that energy to be able to help your mito cells uh, get that energy and build. So I, I'm encouraged when I see events like this moving forward and having people like yourself that are motivated and have that opportunity to connect. And that's what Mito Canada is, 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 is a part of. Um, mito Canada is celebrating 10 years next year. Uh, what advice do you have for patients and advocates to help raise the profile of mitochondrial disease? Uh. Keep keep hosting events in your community. Keep going. Keep spreading awareness. One day we will hopefully find a cure. So that work, uh, patient advocates, is very very important. Um, yeah, that's it's it's important work and has to be done. And and it, one day we will find a cure. So. 